this video is going to be totally out of character, out of style. I'm literally in the basement bathroom of my house while my wife and kids sleep because I didn't want to wake anybody up to do this. Can you get out of here? Okay, get out of here. I just watched two videos on YouTube, one of which was Casey Neistat announcing that he's taking a break from YouTube for a couple of weeks while he gets another project up and running. The other one was Roman Atwood saying that he's giving up daily vlogs indefinitely, although he may continue to create content. The amazing thing is I, I started reading the comments in Roman Atwood's video in particular. Casey looks like he's got a project actually brewing and I, I see a look of determination in his eyes when he says that he's got something big up and coming. Roman in his eyes looked like he had true despair, stress, he looked unhappy, he looked upset about the decision he was making, the announcement that he was making, and I genuinely felt bad for him watching the video. I felt even worse from reading the comments where people were dumping on him for being a millionaire, apparently, and giving this up. Um, apparently people think that he is somehow indebted to them for them having viewed his free content for the last few years. It made me think of a few things that happened as I was winding up my litigation practice and the, some of the comments I got from clients, one of which was a client who said, if I knew that you were going to be giving up law in five years, I never would have hired you as my lawyer. And I said, first of all, I didn't know that I was going to be giving up law in five years, but you hired a lawyer, you didn't buy a lawyer. People seem to think that because they have a very deep personal connection with Roman, Casey, anybody creating original content on YouTube, that somehow the content creators are indebted to their viewers. They're grateful for them, they're thankful for them, they love them, and they make content for them, but they don't exist for them. And the idea that Roman would be so stressed about making a life decision, which he thinks is best for him at this point in his life, uh, that he would be so stressed about it because his subscribers would somehow dump on him for making this decision, maybe a little, it, it upset me, it, it genuinely upset me because it reminded me sort of of what I went through when I was winding up litigation, where people thought not that they had hired someone, that they had, were grateful enough or fortunate enough to have someone, they thought they owned someone for an extended period of time. Roman, nobody owns you. Uh, I think you know that, I don't think you're necessarily all of your subscribers know that, but they subscribe to you because you create quality content. In the olden days, <clears throat> a television show would have been canceled. You say, okay, that sucks. It was a great show. I'm gonna go start watching another show. With YouTube, there's sort of a more personal connection between the viewer and the, the content creator that the viewer sort of thinks they have something more of a foothold in the content creator's life, personal life uh, being so that the content creator is not just free to up and leave whenever they want. When they in, in reality, they are. Not only are they, but they shouldn't feel bad about doing it if they decide to do it. <sighs> the flip side, though, from the content creator's perspective, and this is where I sort of feel bad for Roman, is in his departure video, the one from today where he's talking about giving it up, he repeatedly referred to the decreasing number of views on videos. And this is where the sickness and the compulsion of content creation becomes a poison for the content creators. Their number of subscribers, their number of views, their number of thumbs up, likes, comments, whatever, it becomes an aspect of their identity where when they start to see that decrease for whatever the reason, stagnation, natural sort of uh, saturation, but when they start to see that number decrease, they start to feel that a part of their identity is somehow being dissolved and they're losing an aspect of who they once were, and they start getting depressed about it. And that in and of itself is depressing. The idea that someone with 16 million subscribers could start getting upset at the decreased numbers of views on his videos, because I sort of went back to start looking at, you know, what was the progression of the decrease in views, and they were going from multiple millions to millions to high 900,000s per view over time. And I can see someone who's a compulsive creator putting out vlogs every day saying, geez, I'm putting out vlogs every day. It's taking exponential amounts of time of my day, my life, dedication, mental framework, but fewer and fewer people are watching it. And then they start thinking, I must be worth less and less if fewer and fewer people are watching it. And that's a sad sort of state of affairs of vloggers, content creators, where your metric of success and worth is directly correlated to your views, subscribers, and 
feedback, thumbs up, like, whatever, all, all the nonsense. The other thing that I think most people don't realize is the amount of time that goes into making actual original content on a daily basis. Um, PewDiePie, I know he's open about it. He says he has editors and you know he shoots the content, they edit the content. It's shooting the content is one thing. Editing the content is another. One takes hours, the other takes hours. Add those two hours together, you have half of your living day already occupied. Um, so I don't know how Roman was doing it. I don't know how Casey does it. But I can understand that if they are shooting and editing their own content, that is the better part of the waking day every day for however long they've been doing it, dedicated to their passion, to their art. And at some point, they say, I just want to walk around without a camera in my hands. I want to walk around without worrying about capturing content that I'm going to have to subsequently edit, add music to, upload, thumbnail, tag words, description, all this sort of stuff that takes out half of a waking day. They just want to actually live life without having to worry about documenting it. Um, but the idea that somehow their viewers might think that, no, you've been documenting your life for long enough that you have to document your life for an indefinite period of time going forward, it's selfish. It's not, it's not what the spirit of content creation is about. It's about creating content because you love it. And if you, people don't like watching it, don't watch it. Uh, if you like watching it, be grateful for what you got. But don't poop on someone because they make a life decision that they need to change their life's direction or go in another direction for whatever the reason. There might be any number of reasons. Marital reasons, family reasons, stress reasons, financial reasons. Um, it's a little depressing. It's a depressing seeing the comments that go on in there. 50% uh, of them are great, 50% of them are appreciative, they have an understanding of what goes on and they're thankful for what they've gotten without an expectation of what they're entitled to in the future. The other 50% is enough to suffocate you. <sighs> Seven minutes. I don't know where I was going with this. I think that's pretty much it. <clears throat> what do you have to say? Oh, you, you actually farted. As I picked up, that's, um, okay, I hope I didn't wake anybody up, um, out of character, sorry man, Roman, you do what you have to do, which is good for you and what you want to do, I have a feeling, knowing the obsession that goes behind content creation, that you'll be back, sooner than later, probably tomorrow, maybe the day after, maybe Monday, Casey, totally excited to see what you got coming, I hope Samsung is involved, drones, GoPros, and I don't know, maybe ultra macro photography. We'll see. Peace out.